Hi everyone, welcome to Sandra's Bible Tales. I had this random spontaneous um, revelation from God while I was posting something. And I know that when I usually have these random spontaneous revelations, it's just something that's so spontaneous that I know that I know that I know it's from God. Um, and not only that, usually when, when I have a, uh, something like this, like I get that, that, that feeling or, or uh, a vision or something like this, usually God confirms it with a preaching the next day. It's the craziest thing. So I have this revelation and, and then the next day I'm watch I'm going through YouTube and I see something that caused my attention. I click on it and this man of God is saying almost the same thing, but a different, it's a different way of saying it, but it's the same concept. And it was Brian Green who was talking about hidden treasures. It wasn't exactly the same revelation that, that I received, but it's the same concept. And what, what God was showing me was this, because I was, I was, <clears throat> scriptures were, were coming to my head. And in the Bible, it says, in 2 Corinthians 8, 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Now that I had studied it for a house of peace teaching, so that was already, that I already had that there. And this is why I think it, it sparked up everything. So it says, Jesus became poor so that we can become rich. So then I'm thinking, okay, God, you said you became poor. Your son became poor so that we can become rich. And you say in your word, it says, I want you to prosper. I want you, I want you to prosper in all things as you're so prosperous. So I'm like, God, you want us to be prosperous. As a matter of fact, you look at men and women in the Bible, like Esther, she became a queen. David, he became a king. You know, Abraham, God, uh, God told him, go, I will, I will get, you know, you know, go and, and I'm going to show you this land where you're going to, you know, uh, be a father of nations and et cetera, et cetera. Moses, God said, he said, go and I'm going to give you the promised land. Um, just throughout scripture, we see how God, look at Hob, you know, how God blesses men and women who love him because it's his delight. What what father wouldn't want to bless his child, right? What what mother wouldn't want to bless her, her child? So I'm thinking, okay, God, you want to bless us. But then at the same time, and remember, God never contradicts himself. At the same time that we see that there's scriptures like in Matthew 16, uh, Matthew 6, 19, that it says, do not store up riches on earth where moth can eat them and where, where thieves can steal them. He says, but store up riches in heaven. And you're like, store up riches in heaven. How do you, how do you go about storing riches in heaven, right? And then it also talks about do not that when when in the in the Bible verse where it says you have stolen from me, but you say, How have you stolen from me? And it says, Because of your tithes, you have not given me your tithes and offerings. And it says, Test me now in this. God says, Test me now in this to see if I will not open up the heavens for you, saying, If you give me what's mine, if you give me money, if you give your tithes and your offerings, I will bless you. So I'm thinking, okay, so God wants to bless us and make us rich. But at the same time, God doesn't want us to store up the money here. And God wants us to be cheerful givers, right? So if we look at the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verses 24 through 27, we see that some tax collectors came up to Jesus and they're, they're telling him to give them the tax money. And Jesus tells his disciple, I want you to go to the lake, go to the fish, open its mouth. You're going to find the money there. Bring it to me so we can pay the taxes. And I'm thinking, man, he got the money when he needed it. He didn't have the money on him. He didn't store that money on earth. That money came to him when the time of necessity was there. Just like when they were hungry and he prayed over the fish and the bread. The fish and the bread were not there. But at the moment where it was needed, he, play, he prayed over it and it was multiplied to him. So, I'm, 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 it's, you know, it's, it's there, it's there, it's going in my mind, it's rushing. And I know it's God speaking to me. And then I'm thinking about in the book of Luke, chapters 9 to 3, when Jesus sends out his apostles, what does he tell them? He sends them out and he says, don't take anything for the journey. But you're thinking, God, what do you mean don't take anything for the journey? If I'm going to go on a journey, if I'm going to go on a vacation, if I'm going to go anywhere, if I'm going to travel, I want to make sure I got plenty of stuff. I want to make sure I got, um, you know, a clothes to change and my blow dryer for my hair, like anything, everything, you know. And, and Jesus says, don't take anything for the journey. When you go, the people are going to provide for you. Where is that provision coming from? Why would the people provide for them? What is that provision about? So I remember years ago, this I hadn't told anyone. Um, I, I told one person years after I, I, it happened, the dream I had. And I kind of felt bad about even sharing it because it was so sacred and so beautiful to me. And, and you know, I think about it now, I'm like, it was sacred and beautiful to me. I think it was the first and only dream that I've ever had about heaven. Um, it was not my, my expectations. I remember I was very young in God. And I had a dream that I was like in this mall. There was so many things to choose from. Like there was so many things. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. This is beautiful. Like, wow. And it was like a get what you need, you know, type of thing. It's like a, 
you have everything you have. And I was like, what is this place? And uh, the person there, I don't know if it was God. I don't, know, I don't know who it was. They were telling me this is heaven. And I was like, I'm in heaven? Like heaven is like a ma? Like I was like, what? And that's it. That's all I remember from the dream. But then I know many people have had visions and dreams and have been taken up to heaven and they don't say it's like a ma. They, they talk about how beautiful it is and, and you know everything that they see and it's great and it's amazing. But in the little dream that I had, it was, it was a ma. And then I know that uh, Apostle Maldonado, he's, he's said the, the testimony how someone, I don't know, a man of God had a, a vision or a dream, I think it was, where when he went up to heaven, he saw lungs and he saw like a body parts and there was many body parts. And, and supposedly one of the angels had told him, you know, when someone is sick or when someone is in need of a lung or someone is in need of something, this is where we take it from. So that was what he saw. And I was like, man, that's crazy because that's kind of like the mock concept, but it's not about clothes or it's not about food or whatever, whatever. It's about, you know, medical. It's about body parts. And then someone else, I remember said, they said a testimony that they saw a vision that there was like a lot of goods in a, in a place, like a, like a closet or a storage or something. And they had names on it. And, and the person asked, and it was in heaven. They asked, what is this? And, and I think it was an angel or something told them, this is the, the blessings that the people that we have for the people on earth they don't claim so it's like their inheritance but that they never claimed that they never you know signed up for like they never claimed it so they never received it and and all of this is going through my head and it was like if god was telling me sandra do you get it like there is like it's like if it was a bank account stored up in heaven it's money you can't see it's yours it's god has it for you god has blessings for you god wants you to prosper but he's saying he's saying give me what's mine and heaven gains interest because remember the the talents the the parable of the talents that the one the one that had i think it was five multiplied it i mean doubled it ten the one who had you know so on and so forth the one that had one and hit it nothing like they took they took it away from him so it's like okay don't store up things here on earth where people can steal from you you know store it up in heaven and I'm, I'm another thing. I have a testimony. I gave, I once gave a, a big offering to God. I, I believed it all my heart. I was like, you know what? Let me give this much. As a matter of fact, it wasn't even that great or whatever. I gave a thousand dollars to God. But the thing is, the reason why it was so great is because I had nothing. Like that was the only one thousand dollars I had. <laughs> so I gave it. I gave it to God in faith. And then I was borrowing money. I borrowed money from my uncle. I needed to pay my bills. And I was like, God, I need, I'm like, I'm good for the month. Until next month, I'm like, but I need $1,000 because I need to pay back everyone that I borrow money from. I need exactly $1,000. And the broker I used to work with calls me up and he says, Sandra, you have a check in the office. And I'm there thinking, I, he didn't owe me anything. I had stopped working with him. And I'm like, what do you mean I have a check in the office? He says, yeah, you don't remember this and this and this deal that you helped me. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, no, I don't remember. And I'm like, I really don't. And he was like, yeah. And he told me the name of the person that we have helped. And I was like, I don't recall and he was like sandra you have a check in the office just come pick it up and i was like okay i'm not gonna argue with you and i go to the office and the check i didn't even ask him how much it was the check was for exactly a thousand dollars so you know god has shown me time and time again god is faithful but it's like what he's saying is why do you need to see it and i'll give you an example if you have a rich father and you say dad i'm gonna go for a, a you know i'm gonna go to study in a in a university for four years i'm gonna see which one i like he might say, okay, daughter, or okay, son, go, tell me if you like it. And if you like it, when it's time to pay, I will transfer the money over. I don't want you to have that much money on you. And I don't want you to have the access to the money because I would rather have the control. So go, tell me what you like, and I will transfer it to you when you need it. And then he says, okay, dad, now I'm going to need a place to stay in. Okay, tell me what place you want to stay in. And when it's time to pay, I will transfer the money to you. And that's how I see it. I'm not saying, I believe with all of my heart, this was God showed me this revelation and God gave it to me. You know, I'm not saying that it is what it is that I'm that. No, I'm saying this is what I believe with all of my heart. And I believe God even confirmed it to me was that, you know, God wants us to, to, yes, God, of course we have to have money and savings and stuff because we need to pay on earth, but God wants us to make sure that we always trust him. Because if we have all the money in the world, always in the bank, we have so much money in the bank, then why would we need to trust him? Why would we need to come to him when we have, well, we're never going to, we're never going to believe him for finances. I don't think that's his will. I think his will is for us to always trust him. So even, even great men of God that have 
um, lots of money or have, you know, they have big houses or big temples because or big churches because the more members you have, the more um, employee staff you're going to need, the more everything you're going to need. When you throw a party, it's for many more people. So it's a higher price. So of course, if you have a house and you want to invite people over to your house, guess what? You need a bigger house. If you're going to have preachers staying over your house, you're going to need more rooms. So you're going to need a bigger house. But it doesn't mean you have to have all the money in the world to cover that house. It just means either God did a miracle and he paid a cash for you. Or every month you're going to have to believe him that the church members are going to give enough to pay for it. It's like a every day, no matter how much it is, no matter if you're, if it's a lot, if it's whatever. But every month just trust in him that he has it and he will transfer it over to you. As long as you give him what what's his, he'll be like, hey, here, this is, you know, this is, how much do you need? Here, it's transferred to you. So that's, that's something that I had in my heart and I fell in love with it. I was like, God, thank you for showing me this. And I just wanted to share with you guys. So I hope that, that I, I mean, I don't know. I just, I really wanted to share. Oh, by the way, what, um, so the, the next day, the, the preaching I had seen was Brian Green and he was talking about hidden treasures and it was kind of the same concept. He didn't say how we have this stuff in, in heaven. He was just talking about how, how sometimes God will, you know, put, money there or hide stuff like hide riches and treasures but where does that hidden treasure come from of course it comes from heaven think about it you know so thanks for watching have a nice day god bless you